finding this magnificent bluff that very first night, I was unable to sleep. I was so excited about the possibility of building this beautiful city that I had dreamt up once in England. But you see, in my day, times in England were very hard. Many men were losing their fortunes, and uh, if you were, didn't have any money, you couldn't pay your debts. If you couldn't pay your debts, they put you in prison. My dear friend Robert died in one of those horrible places. And that led me to petition the king to create a new colony in the new world, a place where good, honest, hardworking people could get a fresh start. And, well, oddly enough, the king agreed. We named it in his honor, Georgia, for old King George. <laughs> However, he told us that we would have a secondary purpose. We would act as a buffer between the Spanish Catholics down in Florida and the burgeoning royal colony in Carolina. <laughs> At first, we didn't allow Catholics to settle here, as we figured that they would be in league with Spain. But times have changed. The Grand Cathedral of St. John the Baptist on Abercorn Street is a wonderful testament to that. We also didn't allow lawyers here at first, and I'd like to know who changed that rule. We also didn't allow hard liquor of any sort here, although I understand that that has changed as well. I hear tell that Savannah is a drinking town with an eating problem. <laughs> Lucky for some. But this colony was never about me. It was about the betterment of my fellow man. A fresh start, a new beginning. And after all, isn't that the very seed of what the American dream truly is? Well, as you walk the streets and squares later on today, I do ask an hysterical for old General Overboard. And uh, I'll leave you with this. Uh, all of the traffic that you see, I promise you, it's not my fault. <laughs> Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your tour and the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.